Hello and welcome to Express News. In the next half an hour, we'll get you all the latest news and updates. My name is Abhishek Mahajan. We'll start with our top story. The first phase of the 2024 Lok Sabha election begins. Seven-phase democratic exercise to elect a new government began on Friday. People voted for 102 seats across 21 states and union territories of India. The voting began at 7 a.m. Indian Standard Time and continued till 6 p.m. With a 60-minute window for voters who reach polling stations before the cut-off time and are in queue when the booths close. Counting will take place for all phases on June 4th. Eight union ministers, two former chief ministers and one ex-governor are among those who are set to test their electoral fate in the first phase. Union Road and Transport Minister Nitin Gadkari is seeking a hat-trick of wins from the Nagpur seat. In 2019, he defeated current Maharashtra Congress chief Nana Patole by 2.16 lakh votes. Six seats in Madhya Pradesh, including Chindwada, Congress stalwart, Kamal Nath's family Baston voted today. Sitting MP Nakul Nath, who is the ex-chief minister's son, is the Congress candidate. Union Minister Kiran Rijiju is contesting from the Arunachal West seat. Rijiju's main rival is former Chief Minister and pre present President of Arunachal Pradesh Congress, Nabam Tukhi. Sikkim Seoul Lok Sabha seat also votes today, as do the single seat constituencies of Andaman and Nicobar, Lakshadweep and Puducherry. The Naxal Head Bastar seat in Chhattisgarh, which has 11 seats, and Udhampur in Jammu and Kashmir round out the seats voting in its first phase. The Nilgiri's Lok Sabha constituency in Tamil Nadu is witnessing battles between A. Raja, the incumbent DMK MP and former telecom minister, and L. Murugan of the BJP. This will be the first time that Murugan is contesting from here. Union Minister of Ports, Shipping and Waterways, Sarbanan Sonowal, is seeking a return to Lok Sabha from Dibrugarh in Assam. A 102-year-old lady casted her vote in Dindigul district of Tamil Nadu on Friday. As the Phase 1 polling begins, Prime Minister Narendra Modi called on young and first-time voters to vote in large numbers. The country's chief election commissioner Rajiv Kumar appealed to the voters to exercise their democratic responsibility by voting. India's Home Minister and Senior BJP leader Amit Shah filed his nomination from the Gandhinagar Lok Sabha seat on Friday. Congress has fielded its party secretary Sonal Patel from Gandhinagar. Prime Minister Narendra Modi addressed a public meeting in Maharashtra on Friday. PM Modi said the presence of people is a proof that the target of Viksit Maharashtra and Viksit Bharat is not too far. Bharatiya Janata Party's National President J.P. Nadda holds a roadshow in Kerala's Kotayam on Friday. Assam Chief Minister Himanta Biswa Sarma addressed a public rally in Gohati of Assam. Samajwadi Party Chief Akhilesh Yadav addresses an election rally in UP's Gautam Budhanagar. Vice Admiral Dinesh Kumar Tripathi has been appointed as the next chief of the Indian Navy. He will assume the charge of his new office on April 30th. India has delivered Brahmo supersonic cruise missiles to the Philippines on Friday as part of the $375 million deal between the two sides signed in 2022. Indian benchmark indices ended lower for the third consecutive session on Friday. At close, the Sensex was up 1.83% at 73,088.33. Meanwhile, the Nifty was 0.70% up at 22,149.80. The rupee paid initial losses to finally settle for pesa higher at 3.48 against the US dollar on Friday. Gold price on the multi-commodity exchange opened higher and went on to touch an intraday high of 
72,869 per 10 grams. Meanwhile, silver traded at rupees 86,400 per kilogram. Oil surged by as much as three dollars per barrel in Asian trade on Friday. Brent crude oil fell back to 87.10 dollars per barrel. U.S. stocks closed near the unchanged mark on Thursday as investors sifted through the latest corporate earnings. The S&P 500 lost 0.22 percent, while the Nasdaq Composite lost 0.52 percent. European Union leaders agreed to reforms on nine fronts to revitalize the bloc's economy. European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen said the economic case for the CMU was crystal clear and leaders had discussed the steps to shape it. Nigeria's finance minister, Valeyadin, said that the country has halved government borrowing from the central bank as Africa's biggest economy works to curb monetary financing. Aiden added that Nigeria could return to international capital markets this year as the government was listening to its advisor on appropriate time issue. Explosions were heard in Iran's Isfahan city as the country activated its air defences in what media reports have described as a response to an Israeli strike. However, Iran is yet to confirm the strike. As per the country's state media, three drones which were spotted in the sky over Isfahan were destroyed by the air defences. Iran also closed its airports in Tehran, Shiraz and Isfahan after the strikes. As tensions reached a tipping point in West Asia, European Union Chief Ursula von der Leyen has called on Israel and Iran to refrain from escalation. Iran has warned Israel against a military strike and said Tehran would not hesitate in responding to any Israeli military action. UN Chief Antonio Guterres called for de-escalation in West Asia, saying that the recent escalations make it even more important to support efforts to find lasting peace. Japan's government also showed its concern following the reported strike on Iran. Chief Cabinet Secretary Yoshio Masahayashi said Japan condemns any actions that could spark further escalation. Ukraine warned foreign minister from the group of seven major powers on Thursday they had to change strategy if they wanted Kiev to withstand increasingly destructive Russian air assaults. The G7 ministers acknowledged the need to get more air defense systems to Ukraine. Jens Stoltenberg said a meeting of the NATO-Ukraine Council would take place and that Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky was expected to participate virtually. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz said he hoped that members of the NATO alliance would soon deliver six Patriot air defense systems to Ukraine. He added that Germany had already promised to deliver one. In a series of diplomatic meetings at the United Nations headquarters, United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres met with Minister for Foreign Affairs of various countries including Iran, Algeria and Spain. Police in Pakistan's southern city of Karachi shot down a suicide bomber and a terrorist as they attacked a vehicle carrying five Japanese nationals on Friday. The Japanese survivors have been moved to a safe place in police custody. They were travelling along with the guards and a driver when they were attacked. The US ambassador to the United Nations, Linda Thomas Greenfield, met Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida in Tokyo on Friday. The discussions were focused on the subject of cooperation between Japan, US and South Korea at the UNSC. A 16-year-old boy has been charged with a terrorism offence for allegedly stabbing an Assyrian church bishop in Sydney during a church service on Friday. Kenya's President William Ruto said country's military chief General Francis Ogola was among the 10 people killed in the military helicopter crash on Thursday. Meanwhile, bodies of the 10 Kenyan military services men killed in a helicopter crash were returned to Nairobi for a religious service. The aircraft was on a visit to troops deployed in northwest Kenya to combat endemic cattle rustling. 
Peru's Congress approved an agreement reached with the United States that will allow it to intercept planes suspected of carrying illegal drugs. Such operations were suspended for more than two decades due to an aircraft accident. Sri Lanka will mark the fifth anniversary of deadly blast that rocked the nation on Easter Day in 2019 on April 21st. The blast targeted three churches and three luxury hotels, shocking the country. Chilean healthcare public workers marched to the Ministry of Health to bring a list of unsatisfied demands to the government on the second day of the national strike. Heavy rains trigger flash floods in Pakistan's Balochistan. At least six people died after heavy rain caused floods in the region. Balochistan has endured a week of extreme weather with yet more rain expected in the coming days. Heavy rains trigger flooding in southeast Iran. Downpour has displaced thousands of residents and damaged infrastructure and agricultural lands. Iranian state media stated that three road construction workers have died in the flooding. Rivers overflowed while dams reached capacity, leading to extensive property damage. Heavy downpours and subsequent flash floods struck the Iranian provinces of Bandar Abbas, Kerman, and Sistan and Balochistan. Parts of Kazakhstan and the lower reaches of Ural River prepared for peak flood water on Thursday, while three Russian regions struggled to cope more than two weeks into the worst flooding in living memory. Kogan officials on Russia's side of the border with Kazakhstan said water levels in the Tobol River around the city has now exceeded 10 meter over the level considered dangerous. Now in Russia, the governor of the Tumen region, a center of oil and gas production, said on Wednesday up to 100 settlements were expected to be flooded in the coming days. Many still stranded amidst widespread floodings in Dubai. Authorities said people were struck in buildings where power and water has been cut off and people have no access to food. Heavy rain struck port city of Mukhala in Yemen as part of a recent air depression affecting various regions. Flood warnings issued due to intensity of the downpour. Torrential rains resulted in widespread destruction including flooded farms, submerged car repair shops and damage to the Khor al mukhala construction project. People across Colombia grappled with water rationing as the country's reservoirs dry up to El Nino phenomena. As a voice fall to 28.75% of their capacity. Meanwhile, in the Caribbean city of Santa Marta, water tanker trucks become lifeline for residents. Media reports stated as a voice dry up represented 3.06% less than the lowest level recorded for April over the previous 20 years. Wildfire destroys over 800 hectares of pine tree and oinamal forest in central Mexican state of Morelos. Fire brigades have managed to control 65% of the fire. Fire brigades from other states such as Michoacan, Mexico City and State of Mexico have been deployed to help local teams. The origin of the fire is still unknown. UK-based Texary has developed joint autonomous robots to patrol warehouses and use artificial intelligence to scan its surroundings. Dexter systems can capture millions of data points across multiple locations each day. The data is then used to build up a detailed 3D model of the warehouse to offer real-time insights and predictive analytics. A single battery-powered robot can scan warehouses of 1 million square feet in size and over 100,000 pallets in a day. They can then return autonomously to its charging station when needed. Thai scuba divers become citizen scientists amid rising plastic pollution in Phuket Island. Divers work to disentangle abandoned fishing gear from coral which have trapped unsuspecting fish inside. Non-governmental organization is helping to coordinate lessons that teach recreational divers, a fast-growing scuba hobby group which has over 80,000 certified divers how to use scientific tools to help marine scientists. A young giant panda born in the Republic of Korea has been brought back to China with 
it leads to South Korea in 2015. The panda is now settling into her new surrounding and has now began exploring the outdoors after completing two weeks of quarantine since her arrival. Vietnam Ethnic Groups Culture Day 2024 program enters day two today. The four-day program honors culture of Vietnamese ethnic groups. Visitors throughout the program will be introduced to many traditional art forms of ethnic groups such as Shai Dam, Drum Performance, Rom Wong and Robam Folk Dancing and Don Ka Thai to Folk Singing. The program organized in the area of Son Thai town, Hanoi gathers together more than 300 people from 54 ethnic groups across the country. Millions of butterflies of various species took flight from the forest to Thailand's Lam Shai Dam area, creating a spectacular sight for the tourists. Lam Shai Dam serves as a popular water tourist tourism destination with various water place spots to cool off and becomes a butterfly of wonderland during the time. These butterflies with their diverse species and stunning colors showcase the richness of the forest ecosystem in this national park. The city of Ichon in South Korea has opened a 24-hour child care center for the first time. The government of Ichon City has also concluded partnerships with six hospitals and community clinics in the area to provide swift emergency health care to children when needed. With the plunging birth rate being a serious social issue in Korea these days, this centre offers a viable solution to the parents. Medical workers and others gathered at a shrine in Nara Prefecture of Japan for a centuries-old festival to pray for good health. The festival has been held at Ohomiwa Shrine in Sakurai City for over 13 centuries in spring. Pharmaceutical firms Nationwide Send Medicine as offerings for the event also known as the Medical Herbs Festival. This year about 2,500 items including cold and stomach medicine were offered. Spanish hospital enlist therapy dogs to boost ICU patients' morale. Patients in the program receive two visits each week of 15 to 20 minutes each. To celebrate the festival of democracy, India's renowned sand artist Sudarshan Patna created an artwork to raise awareness. The artwork gives the message, I definitely vote, encouraging citizens to go and vote. American singer-songwriter Taylor Swift surprises with extra tracks on Tortured Poets Department album. Swift's 11th studio album featuring 16 tracks was officially released at midnight, but hours later she revealed a second installment with an extra 15 songs. North Korea has released a new song praising leader Kim Jong-un for being a friendly father and a great leader. The music video for the song was aired on the state-controlled Korean Central Television on Wednesday. Chennai Super Kings will take on Lucknow Super Giants in the Indian Premier League match in Lucknow shortly from now. India captain Rohit Sharma roots for test series between India and Pakistan on neutral soil. Fast bowler Jofra Archer says he cannot endure another year disrupted by injuries as he looks to secure a spot in England's 2020 World Cup squad. England's oldest living men's test batter Raman Subaru has died at the age of 92. The youngest player in the World Chess Championship Candidates Tournament, D. Kukesh, is back into joy relieved after win. Commonwealth Games and Asian Games silver long jump medalist Murli Sri Shankar has injured his knee and will now miss the Paris Olympics. Atlanta progressed to the Europa League semi-finals despite losing 1-0 to Liverpool as they won 3-1 on aggregate. Newly crowned Bundesliga champions Bayer Leverkusen reached the Europa League semi-finals.
Kasper Ruud and Stefan Sissipas each racked up a straight sets win to reach the quarterfinals of the Barcelona Open. World number one, Iga Swantek will take on re-emergent Emma Raducanu in the Stuttgart Open quarterfinals. Alright, that's all for this edition of Express News. But do let us know your thoughts on the news of today. For those on the go, you can get all the latest news and updates from India and across the world on the DD India mobile app. The app is available on both Android and iOS platforms. Scan the QR code on the screen to download now. We'll be back with more news as it breaks here on DD India. I'm Avishik Mahajan from all of us here in Delhi. Thanks for watching Express News.